What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Carefree and uh, we got a few closures coming in a little bit later today. Well, tomorrow for me. And so we're going to look at the monthly, the weekly, all on spot. <clears throat> and Or I guess, perpet yeah, spot. There we go because we're looking at Bitstamp. My bad. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin. Obviously, uh, we'll take a look at the usual. So uh, Matic, Telecoin, Ethereum Classic, all that good stuff. And we'll go ahead and uh, hopefully today timestamp it. We'll see how that goes. No promises, though. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive into the charts. we got Ethereum on the monthly right here. Um, if it closes like this, nothing too damning, honestly. Like, it's all good. Uh, this is going to be pretty much uh, like long-legged doji almost. If we could go ahead and uh, at least get it you know, bought back up to about 24, 22, it'll start to have that... Uh, shape <clears throat> we will have to wait till the next monthly closure to really figure out which way the market is going to go if you don't really understand what i'm talking about right now ooh, this is a good plug uh, if you don't understand what i'm talking about right now regarding this and you're new here i made a whole technical analysis 101 playlist go ahead and check it out on my channel it took me like a whole week to make and uh yeah it'll definitely explain all of this uh this is also good if you're like trying to get into trading as well uh, by the end of it you should be able to at least make pretty decent basic trades on your own using technical analysis. And uh, it's just a good tutorial in case you just want to know more about technical analysis as well. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. So we would have to wait for the next closure, but what I am really looking for uh, on this next uh, tick, once this does close in 17 hours, is if the ADX and DMI Plus are gonna start to uh, weaken. If they do, that's gonna apply a little bit more uh, sideways uh, like consolidation type of price action, something kind of similar to this is what I would be uh, is what I'd be thinking is going to happen. And so we kind of move sideways for you know like what uh, two, three, four, like five five ish months, and that's kind of what I'm expecting. I think uh, I think things for the summer are going to kind of like cool off a bit, get a little boring, wash out some of the uh, the newer people that are kind of in here, you know, have weak hands and stuff like that. I think it's going to be more of a trader's market or like. Yeah, about traders market for you know the next few months and I do think things pick up kind of towards the uh, the end of this year rolling into like fall <clears throat> but uh, again that's all crystal ball stuff anyways let's go ahead and take a look at the weekly and see how that's gonna go ahead and close ooh actually the weekly did just close yeah we're this Monday today anyways <clears throat> we did not hold the 10 EMA and we kind of saw that was going to happen with CMEs. We didn't we didn't do it on here either. This is just a lot uglier to look at and can't really do technical analysis off of it. But that was kind of the hint that we weren't going to go ahead and hold the uh, 10 EMA. And we didn't, but this isn't too bad, right? If you're looking at this, this could be, hmm, it doesn't really have the shape. Let me, let me go to like, yeah, it doesn't really have the shape. I was going to say it kind of could be like an inverted hammer. Again, candlestick formations video. Check it out. Technical analysis 101. But, yeah. Mm, so, that does imply a little bit more like sideways and down. Uh, we also had a trend line coming in right here, which we did get the breakage of that. And we were kind of expecting, yeah, oh, there we go. I forgot to take my drawing tools off. But, we, uh, we did break it. And we kind of knew that was going to happen just because of how uh, Bitcoin pretty much already had the same trend line. See? And it's uh, it broke that like two weeks ago. So we were kind of expecting Ethereum to follow suit. And it definitely did. So what does this mean, right? Um, for right now, I would say we probably get a backfill on uh, last week's candle. That is the easy move, especially since we closed below the 10 EMA. And probably test about $2,100. Uh, volatility is expanded uh, on, on the weekly level, which means uh, price action is going to get crazier getting into the future. Uh, the swings are going to get a little bit more aggressive. Uh, so that is one thing to note, and that is for the upside and downside, obviously. Volatility is not directional dependent. Um, if we do confirm this as a low, I'd like to see a closure above this wick high on a, on a weekly. So that would be this time next week. But I don't think that is what's going to happen. I do think we go ahead and just kind of move sideways and maybe down a little bit more. <clears throat> but definitely sideways is what I'm looking at for right now. Uh, I don't like how we didn't keep the uh, 10 EMA. That does imply a, little, a lot more pressure towards that downside than I originally expected. It was looking pretty healthy. Not too much anymore. 
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the three day just to see if we can get any hints here. Yeah, the three day, um, three days saying a little bit more downside as well. So yeah, I definitely think 2100 is within the cards, right? Get that back fill on, on next week or last week's candle. Um, and then does the purple 55 hold is the real question. If it doesn't, which I don't, I honestly don't really think it will. We kind of had like, this was kind of like our try to the upside and it doesn't, it looks like a failed rally, right? On the three day. And so I'm going to target moves kind of back down towards about $1,700, $1,600. And if we look at the weekly, I think that is probably like the next relevant area to be honest. Yeah. So like, cause this is still just saying continuation, right? <clears throat> And so if we did, the, the next relevant area to the downside is about 1600 on a weekly. And uh, I do think that does get, like, I, I think that gets hit by looking at the three day. Uh, yeah, so a little bit more, a little bit more downside is looking like it's gonna be in the cards. But again, you know, like, I think this is gonna be a major opportunity. If you're like a long-term trader, right, or a trend trader, uh, this is the time, the time to be looking for a longer term position. Now the key word in this, right, is look. I'm not saying enter in right now, like this This is it, no. I'm saying like, uh, just be observant. If you know what your edge is, if your edge is moving averaging, moving averages and uh, stuff like that or conf confirming a low on, a week, on the week, on the weekly, something like that, right? Whatever, whatever your edge is, wait for it to come up. I'm not saying just hop in right now. But uh, there's definitely going to be a little bit more opportunity coming into the future. But uh, this is the time to be observant for the next long-term trade, if that's what you're into. And then, you know, as we get into the short-term time frames, I'll give you guys, like, my targets for those short-term traders that want to know what's going on. But this is kind of setting the bias in for, you know, looking at the three-day, at least the next, like, two weeks, right? <clears throat> Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the daily. Uh... Let's see. So we haven't we haven't even confirmed a low here on the, on the daily, right? Uh, if anything, this is going to be looking like it's going to be a continuation, right? We got a backfill on yesterday's candle. Uh, if we do confirm this as a low, I'd like to see uh, a candle closure above about you know twenty five hundred dollars. Do I think that's what's happening? I don't. I know. I don't think that's what's happening at, at all. Uh, we haven't even regained the ten EMA. Things are looking pretty slow, but again, CME's just opened, and so usually, again, price action is a little bit wild. Uh, getting into that, a little bit more confusing, harder to read, uh, up until like Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. But with that, all that being said, I do target about $2,100 still to the downside, first area. Yeah, about 2000 to 21000 or not 21000 about 2000 to uh, $2,100, right around there. We do have daily stokes looking like they do want to go ahead and cross down. That is unconfirmed, but will be confirmed with this next tick. And so if that does happen, uh, we'll be kind of turning down right at the lows, which is also not a good sign, which would imply a little bit more continuation. Again, back to about that $1,600 region. We also have the uh, 200, uh, uh, yeah, 200 simple coming in right there, and that is usually a uh, pretty good target. We already tested the 200 exponential. I don't think it holds up through this next one. I do think we're gonna go a little bit lower and at least test the uh, the 200 simple, like I already said, of course. Also, we have the ADX uh, strengthening to the upside. DMI minus is weakening, but still above the threshold. ADX is your uh, is pretty much uh, gauging the strength of the trend. And with it still increasing to the upside, is still saying that the bears have control in this market. Uh, as of right now, uh, get that with uh, the DMI minus, right? that purple line right here, strengthening to the upside, plus daily stokes turning down uh, right at the lows. That is implying a little bit more downside. So uh, already, I'm, I'm a little bit more bearish. <clears throat> uh, yeah, this isn't looking good. But again, major opportunity still. Uh, this is like short, medium term like targets I'm giving you guys like when I'm talking about like the bearish side. Uh, long term, right? Don't don't confuse this with like long term macro stuff. Like long term macro stuff, I do think we're like super healthy, right? Because let's get a little bit of perspective in this bad boy. If we look at the weekly, we've literally gone straight up for like ever since September. Uh, is it wrong to try and print a higher low on a weekly? Of course not. In fact, that's going to be overall healthy for this market. Like we're this this was your last actual low. Like you could kind of count this, but this is more of like a power drive. Uh, does it hold up? 
it, I, I do think we probably come down and retest around, you know, like sixteen hundred to thirteen hundred dollars and really like solidify that higher low. That's what I honestly think is going to happen, and that's going to be overall healthy for the market. The longer we take here in this consolidation, uh, the the more upside we're probably going to have later on into the future. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't I don't want you guys to 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 confuse me being bearish in the like short to medium term with like uh, the macro, right? Like no. Uh, macro, I think we're freaking awesome. But short to medium term, yeah, we could definitely play out some downside. Very easy. Don't get it messed up. <clears throat> so anyways, taking a look here. Um, yeah, because this is all just continuation. So I do think we have a little bit more downside until we go ahead and confirm a low right here, you know. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 12 hour. What's that bad boy saying? Yeah, oh. So we did have this bullish engulfing camel right on the 12 hour. And... This is looking this is looking bad. This is looking bad, right? We had this bullish engulfing candle on the 12 hour. We came back down, took out uh pretty much the uh the open. Uh typically when I'm looking at like this is like a kind of like a tiny uh, swing failure pattern that I'm looking at at least on the 12 hours. We get into like the lower term time frames. I'm sure it's going to resemble a lot more of a uh, swing failure pattern. And so with it coming down to this open right here, uh yeah, that's pretty much telling me like this is coming further down. This low is not going to hold. Um, that's what I'm getting from this and Stokes are crossed to the downside just nose diving right here yeah this is this is not good uh, DMI minus and ADX both strengthened to the upside both above the threshold I think we're coming down a little bit more so again twenty one hundred to two thousand dollars and uh, does that hold uh, I don't I don't really think so I think we go up a little bit lower to be honest but anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the six hours, see what this bad boy is saying. Um, looking like we just put in a lower high on the six hour. Um, kind of kind of testing around the lows, getting a little backfill. This thing just closed like 20 minutes ago. Uh, this would this is not a low of any sort. Uh, in order to confirm this as a low, we'd have to close above about 2450 again. Uh, I don't think that's what's going to happen. I, I, I think we're going to get a little bit more continuation down. Uh, Stokes are looking fine though, not not really, not too bad, honestly. Let's see what else do we have. Let's look at the four hour. Yeah, four hour. We got Stokes wanting to cross down. We still have about two hours left in this. Um, let's see. If we're looking for like a reversal on the short term, again, twenty four fifty is going to be that area to kind of change the bias to maybe a little bit more upside, but. I would like to see a four hour, like the earliest time frame I'd like to see that on is a, is a four hour. So what we're looking at right here, right? If we go ahead and close above this level, this prior high, um, yeah, I'd be targeting to moves back up to about 26.83 on the short term. Um, let's see, anything else? Do I think that's what's happening here? I don't, I don't. I still, I got to go with the continuation, like. There's nothing here that's screaming like this is the reversal that you're looking for uh, as of yet, especially with the ADX and DMI minus still above the threshold on pretty much all time frames, uh, even the lower ones. Now let's take a look at the one hour, see what the one hour is saying. One hour, uh, one hour is looking all right, but ooh, okay, this is interesting. Let me go back out to the four hour real quick. Hold on. Just to double check this before I go ahead and speak on it. Yeah, so the one hour is actually pretty interesting, right? So, <clears throat> we have HVP redlining all right here. So what does that mean? We're probably going to go ahead and have a fairly decent move on expanding volume probably within the next, like, probably within the next 24 hours, honestly. Uh, now, which way does that... Uh, which way does that move kind of like come in? I do think it's going to be the downside, um, to be honest, because that's kind of what we've had this whole time, and usually volatility uh, stays with the trend. Let's see. I do like how we're putting in a low right here, but anything below, again, that like 2450-ish region is just going to be a lower high to me. And so, yeah, I would still expect – I'd still expect downside. So I'm very – I'm very uh, – I'm very down downside angled. Any any closure below about like 
22.73. And yeah, I would target moves back down to about 21.80 on the very, very short term. Stokes are crossing up right here, but again, this candle just opened like 20 minutes ago. And so uh, it can very easily get faked out. So I'd wait for that confirmation. But I do think we go ahead and play out at least a little bit more uh, upside in the in the very short term. So like on the one hour, maybe back up to about, you know, the uh, the 55 EMA. Or yeah, this purple 55 EMA right here at about $2,400. And then see where things go from there. But um, probably, pr probably print a lower high, right? Because that's what I'm thinking. We have a little bit more downside. But this is looking actually pretty uh pretty strong. Hmm. We'll see. It has no volume though. This one's gonna be a little bit more interesting to play out. But looking at like the weekly, three day, daily, twelve hour, everything's saying a little bit more downside. We'll go ahead and take a look at like the daily on CMEs, right? See if we can go ahead and. Uh, see anything here if anything's more clear let's take a look at the four hour actually on cme see if we get anything more obvious four hour actually looks really good on cmes right we put in this candle right here uh we just closed it so i would like to see how the next candle closes see if we can confirm a low right here but if we do confirm a low right here i would target moves back up to about twenty six hundred dollars so yeah in the short term it's looking all right but that's all dependent on the next candle closure to be honest um <clears throat> Stokes wanting to cross up as well. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Let me go ahead and take a look at Ethereum one more time. This might be a little bit of a bias changer. You know what? I do think we have a little bit more upside on the short term. Great. Yeah, I do think we have a little bit more upside on the short term now that I look at CMEs. They look a lot more clear, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so I'll be targeting moves back up to about 2600 bucks and then like what what does that what is that on like Ethereum? I think that's about about 25 2550 we'll call it just to make it simple, which is going to be the purple 55. Uh, and I think that's really good if we go ahead and close above any 4 hour closures above 2450. I would expect a little bit more upside. So do we go ahead and make a move to the uh, top side of the range? If we go ahead and close above 2450, yes, we do. Do I think that's more likely to happen now looking at the shorter term time frames? Yeah, I definitely do. But long term, yeah, long term, I do think we go ahead and test $2,100 within the next like two weeks. But in the short term, probably test a little bit more upside. So there it is. <clears throat> and then let's go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin. See what we got going on over there. And let's actually take a look at the weekly real quick and the monthly just to see what's up. Monthly. Uh, about to close. Looking rough. This is not, this is, there's nothing pretty about this. Monthly Stokes crossing to the downside. Um, and I mean, there's only like 17 hours left, so I'd pretty much count that as uh, over with. Um, we still don't really have any divergence, divergences built up on this, and so. You know, I'd expect a few more. So probably get a few more divergences built up in this consolidation region, see what's up. But um, yeah, this is not looking like the picture of health and fitness. Uh, we do have this possible inverted hammer right here. In order to confirm that as a low, I would like to uh, see about 41.60 to be taken out to the upside, like on a closure, mind you. But this is not looking good. I think we kind of play out a region right here between about, you know, the, uh, the green 21 and the purple 55 uh, and get these moving averages to come down a little bit. Oh, let's see what else. Yeah, if this area doesn't hold, right? Uh, should I even say it? Yeah, my next area, at least on a weekly, is probably gonna be about $20,000, right? Yeah, 19, $20,000 is uh, gonna be the next relevant area on a weekly for if this area doesn't hold. Uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll come back to it. Let's look at the three day. Yeah, this is looking uh, this is looking pretty bad. Even on the three day, uh, we do have Stokes wanting to cross back up, but we do have this uh, trend line coming in right here. And so I do think we go ahead and test that bad boy out. Nah, I don't like that trend line. We're not even going to use it. Ignore what I just said on that. If it ain't easy, it probably ain't right.
right? I like to stick with the real obvious here. If you got to squint to make it happen, it probably isn't the right thing to be doing. Uh, based off of what I'm looking at right here, my next area to target is probably going to be about $31,000 uh, on the three day. This isn't looking, this isn't looking too hot. But if we go ahead and take out uh, about $39,000 to the upside, I would look at, I would be looking for a continuation at least to the perfect 55 at about $43,000. Um, I can't, I can't say I'm expecting a little bit more upside just yet, you know, at least looking at the three day, if we haven't even confirmed a low here. So got to give it some time. So yes, that does imply that I'm looking for things to go kind of probably back down to about 30, $31,000. Okay, and then, oh yeah, for you guys that are new here, I should have said it on Ethereum, but this boxy region above price action, right, that is your bull trap region on both Ethereum and Bitcoin, so if we go ahead and uh, show any signs of weakness in that area, I would expect for the lows to uh, pretty much be broken, but the longer we spend down here within, within this region, right, pretty much within, in between these two boxes, the, uh, the better it is and the more healthy it's going to look and uh, least likely to probably be a bull trap. Because if you are bearish on this and you are looking for a bull trap, you kind of want that kind of kind of soon. Time's, time's kind of running out for that. But uh, yeah, I think we're good. This is starting to really like shape up to look like accumulation, to be honest. I do think we go ahead and move a little bit more sideways in this region. Uh, again, long term, I do think we have a few more stabs back down to about $31,000. If this low does break, I'm targeting moves, at least on the daily, right? So like the medium term time frame is what I'm calling this, to about, you know, $27,000. <clears> uh, and then that's like the first relevant region. Does, does price action stop there? Uh, I hope so. But again, like after $27,000 breaks, it's pretty much just $20,000. That's the next relevant, re the next relevant region to the downside. Um, if you are looking at this to be a descending triangle, right? Uh, again, this is a, this is not proper TA. We still would need another lower high uh, in order to be put in here <clears throat> and another like test back to the downside. But that's what this could be possibly shaping up to be. Uh, usually these things uh, have res resolution when they're about 75% full. So that would probably be around like the end of the month, 27 June, maybe about 25 June, right around there. Uh, again, and this would be negated with any type of closure above uh, these prior highs right here. So at around like $40,000, that whole theory would be negated in that case. And then uh, in order to get like resolution on this, we'd have to close at least a daily uh, below about $34,000 in order to confirm this as a descending triangle. But I think we're, I think we're all right. To be honest, I do think we just play out some sideways in this region for a few months, to be honest, as our indicator as our indicators kind of cool off. We also have uh, Stokes looking super weak, as we've been saying for, you know, the past like week now. But I do think they go ahead and come and test the top side of the range. This range has been going on ever since pretty much the beginning of this year. So like what, 20? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much the very start of this year. So around like one January. <clears throat> and, you know, if it's been working all these times we have like what one two three four five six seven eight eight tests of it you know who am i to think that it's going to break the next test i think it just continues to hold up until i am proven otherwise by price action itself so again with that being said do i think we kind of just range yeah i do i mean like stokes are perfect for ranging markets and as you can see we've kind of been ranging ever since the beginning of this year between you know $34,000 and $60,000. I mean, again, that's a really big range, but we can kind of cut that in half right over here and still ranging throughout this whole time. We could go ahead and put a horizontal right here to really like showcase it. But again, it caught this high right here, this low over here, this high right here, this low over here, this high over here, well, these highs over here. And then again, this low over here. So it's really getting these turning points within the market, right? And our most recent low. So I do think we go ahead and still come up and test it. <clears throat> so let's see. Looking at the three day, just double checking. Yeah, I do think we go ahead and take a stab down towards, you know, thirty-one, thirty-one thousand dollars, right? I'm trying to like consolidate this all for you, right? So long term, stab down to thirty-one thousand dollars. I do think it's possible. I think that's what we're gonna kind of get. Uh, but like 
for like the medium to long term. Um, well, I guess not medium to long term, but like medium term, I do think we go ahead and just play out a region, right? Stab down to $31,000, come back up and just play out the region over here, allowing the Stokes to kind of come back to this top region and just, you know, range out some more. That's what I really think is going to happen on this. Uh, and this is probably going to take, you know, like three months, you know, two, three months, honestly. Let's go ahead and take a look at, yeah, 12 hour, not looking, not looking too good, but that's not actually what I want to look at. I want to look at the four hour. Um, four hour looks like, mm, that's a tough one. I don't think I really have too good of a read on the four hour on this one. We got Stokes turning down. We do have this low. I'm not even gonna dive into it on this one. I'm not. I'm not too confident on the lower term time frames on here. It's just looking real messy, to be honest. Uh, again, things usually are kind of muddled up until like Tuesday or Wednesday on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, usually, like CMEs have to get in sync with spot. That's typically what it seems like. And so, yeah, I'm not confident enough to go ahead and give you guys any type of targets for this one. The range is very simple though. We do have this high right here at about $36,000. We take that out. Uh, purple 55 is the next target at about $37,000. Uh, if we go ahead and break this low at about $34,000, I would be looking for that swipe down to about $31,000. Very simple. I'm not gonna try and give you like which way I think it's gonna go in the short term, uh, just cause I'm not confident on that. But those are your kind of like bias points. So if you do see price action take out either one of those areas, you guys kind of kind of expect uh, like what would be happening next. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some other assets. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Doge, why not? Uh, again, Doge is getting those uh, closures within the uh, below the purple 55 opening closures. We've had quite a few now. I do think we're going to go ahead and bust this pretty soon. We actually have that confirmed cross down on the Stokes at the lows. Um, my first relevant region is going to be about 25 cents. And then after that is going to be pretty much the 200 uh, exponential right here, the blue line, the blue moving average right here at about 16 cents. And uh, yeah, that's what I really think is going to be happening here. Yeah. The reason why I say that is because you have the uh, the 10, the 21, both turned down negative slopes. You're closing candles below the purple 55. Haven't even been able to really regain it. Um, this is this is looking real bad. And then I'm sure if you go down to the lower term time frames, you're gonna have a descending triangle along these lows. This is like what a real good descending triangle is gonna look like that we kind of like mentioned back on uh, on Ethereum that it, that could be possibly shaping up. Wait, no, not Ethereum, but on Bitcoin that could uh, possibly be shaping up. And as you can see, we have this. The base right here right and then we have the high the low the high the low so we have a few points now and that's how we can go ahead and draw this uh, top trend line right here um yeah and it looks like stokes are going to be wanting to turn down here soon so not looking too good let's go ahead and take a look at polka dot uh but yeah polka dot is looking real weak here uh now that i'm looking at it some more like when things were going up, Polkadot was looking good. I was thinking like, man, maybe I want to go ahead and uh, and possibly apply my strategy to this and, you know, take some trades and get into the uh, altcoin space a little bit more because right now I only trade Bitcoin and Ethereum. But just how much weakness this thing has had, I, I, think I'm, I don't think I'm going to be a, I don't think I'm going to be trading this bad boy. This is looking pretty rough. Anyways, we came back down to about $18, like we already talked about. Uh, if this area does not hold, um, mind you, that we have not confirmed a low here, so this could all just be continuation. I would be driving targets back down to about $15. Uh, we also have daily stokes crossing down. That is, is that cross confirmed yet? Uh, no, not yet. So that cross will be confirmed. Wait. Yeah, that cross will be confirmed tomorrow. And so if that does happen, you're turning down right at the lows. Again, you guys I'm sound like a broken record, I'm sure. That is not good. And yeah, I do think we'd go ahead and come back down to about $15. Uh, that is that is my bias. Uh, this could all be, um, let's see. This could all be negated if we go ahead and close anything above $24, right? Take out this prior high. I don't think that's what's happening at all. We kind of had this uh, 
this pop back up and now we're testing down right at the lows um, and we haven't even been able to catch moving average right we have not uh, closed any moving averages on it this was actually a smooth rejection of the 10 EMA and that's not good either and uh, we're actually seeing the 10 the 21 and the 50 uh, 55 starting to get sprawled out which is also indicating that uh, the the these uh, momentum to the downside is increasing uh, ADX is also strengthening up to go ahead and confirm that uh, DMI minus, uh, I would like to see the strengthen up with the ADX, but uh, it's above the threshold, so that is also still not good. So yeah, do I think we have a little bit more downside from here? I do. But do we go ahead and get a few more drives of bullish divergence off that? Mm, we'll wait and see for that one. Anyways, so with that being said, I do think we go ahead and test around like 1555 because this does look just like continuation. Uh, if we do go ahead and put in a low here, my first area of interest is going to be about 2461. Do I think we're going to go ahead and see some upside right now? No, I do think we go ahead and see some downside. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Ethereum Classic. All right, Ethereum Classic putting in another lower high right here and closing at least above the, uh, the purple 55. I would like to see a closure above about... $68 to go ahead and confirm this as a low. Um, the fact that we haven't been able to catch, you know, the 10 or the 21 is, uh, again, not good. Kind of just like Dot and Doge. Uh, that kind of makes me want to drive targets back down to about $48. And so I'm seeing a few bearish things throughout the rest of the crypto space, right? It's kind of hard to read like Bitcoin and Ethereum when CME is open. But now that I'm looking at like the other coins within the crypto space, uh, it's kind of getting me a little bit more on the bearish side. <clears throat> Again, we'll, we'll go ahead and take a look at Matic here soon. Uh, since that was like the strongest coin within the uh, crypto space right now and see if that kind of like changes the bias. But I am leaning a little bit more towards the, uh, the bearish side. I did, I did say we have a little bit of short term in uh, on like Bitcoin and Ethereum, a little bit more short term upside. There we go. But does that just turn into a lower high? Uh, looking at all the other coins, I, I'm thinking so. Anyways, yeah. But if we do go ahead and confirm this as a low, I'd be looking for about $77 to be the next target if we do confirm this as a low. Mind you, this is not a confirmed low. And so since we do not have a confirmed low, I have to stick with my own rules, my own, like, I have to, I have to uh, yeah, I have to stick with my own rules and drive targets down, you know, still to about $47. Sorry to say it, but looking a little rough. All right, let's take a look at Matic. Let's see, Matic looks like it, uh, Stokes, looking like they go, want to go ahead and cross down. Not confirmed yet. We'll get that confirmed on the next tick. Uh, still not a confirmed blow in my opinion. I would like to see this at least close below the, or above this wick high right here uh, our size counted as a low i'm being a little bit more conservative just based off of everything else in the crypto space but uh it does look like it wants to go ahead and give it a try back up to about two dollars and 20 cents do i think that's what's coming yeah since we did close above the 10 ema and everything still does have a positive slope so at least on at least with matic right this is one of the, again one of the stronger Probably one of the best looking charts within the crypto space. Uh, give me a better looking one if you can. But so far, best one in the whole crypto space right now. Uh, looking like it wants to make new all time highs. Moving averages still all have a positive slope. Uh, this again, looking really good. Kind of a kind of a, a hard chart to hate right here. Like this is solid. <clears throat> like Matic has definitely taken the place of Dot in like my potential like branching out into the crypto space like assets that I want to trade because Bitcoin has Bitcoin Ethereum have both been getting slaughtered in this and like this thing is just holding up like a champ still on the on the precipice of new all-time highs looking really good <clears throat> let's see anything else here yeah two dollars twenty cents again if we go ahead and take out this area to the downside at a dollar fifty one I would be looking for a move to the purple fifty five at about a dollar and sixteen cents and then do we play out a bounce there? Probably. I mean, that would still just be a higher low within this whole thing if we do go ahead and play out a bounce right here. And like, can't can't hate that. Like, this is there's no downtrend right now on this thing. And so, got gotta gotta keep my targets to the upside. Honestly, 
Anyways, nah. Didn't we already do relevant areas to the upside for this bad boy? Nah. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll, we'll save that for tomorrow, right? If we go ahead and get back up to about $2.20, I'll get my uh, new all-time high targets for Nomadic. And we'll probably have that as like a title of a video or something. Uh, let's go ahead and look at Tell, which is hanging around $0.03. Cents. You know, Tell is looking like it wants some upside, too. Yeah, Tell is looking actually pretty good. I mean... You know what? I think I'm letting like Dot and Doge kind of like cloud my uh, my vision or like my analysis, honestly, of this market because those are like two of the weaker coins in here. Uh, so they probably do move up with Bitcoin and Ethereum moving up. But like you got Matic and Tell, which are great looking charts, actually kind of suggesting that we do have some upside. Man, this is a real like back and forth day. And that's kind of cool to have sometimes, you know, not every day you're going to actually have like a real clear vision of where you think the market's going to go. But if I'm looking at Tell... Uh, yeah, I definitely think we go ahead and at least try for a move back up to about uh, three eighths of a cent, right? Three eighths of a cent, or I don't know, like <sighs> spot like zero three eight cents. That's where I think the next target is. I really hate doing like targets on this because I really suck at it, but that's fine. Who cares? You guys know what I mean. You could read the numbers right there. You could do the analysis. This region, this prior high, right? If you're looking at it on your own charts, that's what I'm looking for. That spot right there. Anyways, uh, is there anything else that I want to go ahead and talk about? I think we kind of covered everything. Mm. Let me see. This does look like a bag fill of the daily. I'm just trying to like really, really figure out where I'm expecting things to go. Because I look at the weekly and the monthly and I'm like, mm, this is not looking good. But, let's see, three day ain't looking too good. Two day, well, two day is actually suggesting this could be a low. Let's see, what do I know, right? Let's, let's really think about this and we'll wrap this up and figure it out. Uh, so, I'll, I'll leave it on the next four hour closure. If we could go ahead and get the 10 EMA on the next four hour closure, I do think we go ahead and have some more upside, at least to 2572. If we're looking at the three day, right? If we're looking at the three day, I do think we go ahead and do a few more swipes a little bit lower with coming into the next few weeks from now, right? Over the course of the next few weeks, I do think we have a few more swipes to the downside. And we kind of just fill out this range. Same with Bitcoin, right? A few more swipes to the downside and just fill out this range. In the short term, I do think we go ahead and have a bit more upside and at least $36,000 on Bitcoin. And I'm pretty sure I already said this, but like $24.50 on Ethereum. Uh, after that, I would kind of like to see where like things go. Uh, things are still a little muddled. And so probably tomorrow I'll have a better analysis for you guys. Uh, and that's fine. You know, as a trader, you can't always have a direction. And sometimes you just got to sit aside and just be like, I don't have a clear vision on this. And that's fine. That's fine. Anyways, uh, hopefully this went ahead and helped you guys. I know I probably gave you guys more questions than answers today, but it is what it is, and some days are just going to be like that. But uh, if you guys got any questions, let me know. Uh, give me a comment. Hit me up on social media or something. Find me. Um, yeah. Hopefully you guys are making some money, and I'll see you tomorrow.